So today I want to show you a new module from the impromptu collection, the Note Echo, which is a sort of a delay, but instead of delaying an audio signal, it will delay the notes, the actual control voltage, and it will give us access to various parameters that can create quite interesting results. And I want to start with something very basic, just to show you the concept behind this module. So first of all, we will need a clock signal to tell the module at what rate to create the so-called echoes. Here I have a clock from clock from Impromptu 2 again. Right, this will go to the clock input. Now we need to connect the pitch. In this case, I'm using 12 key, of course, also from Impromptu 2. So the CV output will go to the CV input. Then we need the gate, so the gates will go to the gate input, and this we send to our voice. In this case, I'm using here the FM operator. So again, we have gates and we have CV. In this case, it's pitch, right? And as you can see, we already get a polyphonic voice. You can see the cables here are thicker. So we get a polyphonic voice with each echo getting its own voice. So we have one for the original, and in this case, four more for the delayed signal or delayed notes, right? So now if I play a note, we will hear the original and then the echoes. Right, and again, this will delay the actual voltage and not the audio, and we can choose by how much to delay each echo. We can transpose the echoes and even add modulation to this. So let's really look at a more complex example. So here I have a sort of a random sequence coming from the probability key, sequencing dark energy also with random modulation. It will sound like this, right? The, the steps here have, the sequence itself has probability, so sometimes it will play, sometimes not. Right, but now let's see how this works with the note echo. So I will send the pitch, right, and the gate first to the note echo. We'll also need a clock. For now, we'll use the same clock that I'm using here to drive the sequencer. Right, so I just hold control and get another cable. Right, and from here, this will go back to dark energy. So we have pitch and we have gates. And again, you can already see this turns dark energy to a polyphonic voice right so now this still will not work as you can see and this is because the clock arrives or the clock that goes to the note echo arrives before the gate right the clock goes directly from clocked to the note echo but it also goes first to the uh, probability key and then only then the gate will go back to the note echo right so here we have a sort of a delay going on between the clock and the gate, right? Each module in VCV adds one sample of delay. So again, since the clock comes directly from clocked, right? But the gate comes from the sequencer, we have to delay this clock by one sample. We have to delay this one here by one sample, right? Because of the one sample delay from the probability key. And, but luckily enough, we can uh, do this within the module, uh, module itself, right? In the right-click menu, we have sample delay. If I set this to one, now it will start working again. I hope it makes sense. If not, let me know in the comments and I will try to explain this uh, better in text. Right, but now the notes that are coming, or the gates that are coming from the probability key, right, are being delayed, we get echoes from the voltage itself. Right, now this is nice, but we can make this a bit nicer. If we use a different clock, um, clock division or multiplication in this case, right, to get higher resolution, right, so instead of using the same clock that I'm using here for the probability key, I will use a clock multiplication of four. So the probability key will um, run slower, but the echoes will happen quicker. And it will sound like this. Right, so now we can start changing, for example, the delay times to get something a bit more rhythmic. So we can change the first step, for example, to be delayed by two. And this will basically mean two clock pulses. So it will need two clock pulses until the gate will come out. And then here, let's say five and seven, just to create an interesting rhythm and let's say eight.
Right, so again, this just means how many clock pulses it will take for the taps to output a gate. Right, we can also transpose the taps. So for example, I can take, uh, I can take tap 3 to be an octave up. This will transpose by semitones. So if I take this by 12 semitones up, it's an octave. Right, so now whenever it plays this step, it will actually play an octave uh, higher. And again, this is not working on the audio. There is no pitch shifting or anything like this going on. It will simply add voltage to the pitch information. Right, now we can also add probability to the first step, for example, to add some space. And also to the third tap, right? So this octave up will happen only every once in a while. Here we have probability, right? From zero to one or a hundred. So I'm going to take it to about 50%. Right, so now we get a bit something a bit more interesting. Right, and this works really well also with the so-called normal delay to add even more depth to the sound. So here I have the delay from Surge XD. I will add, just add it a bit. Right, listen to this. Again, we just started with one note every once in a while and now we get a whole sequence of notes in a rhythm. Every another example, I will mute this for a second just so we can concentrate on it. Here in this case, I'm using a more traditional sequencer, if you will. This is the eight step sequencer from Count Modular. I'm actually just using five steps, right? But still, it's a more repetitive uh, looping uh, sequencer, right? This is already going through the note echo, just like we've seen before. And from here, I'm sending it also to a quantizer, right? So now I can also transpose everything freely and it will always stay inside a certain scale, right? There is also probability set just to add a bit more movement. And the voice itself is an FM voice with two FM operators. It will sound like this. Right, again, and I can just transpose things and it will always stay in scale because the quantizer comes after this note echo. Right, so we have a five-step sequence and a more complex sequence coming out of the note echo processing this voltage. Right, now there is also internal voltage that we can use. Right, the CV2 is a sort of an offset, right, and we can use this in all sorts of ways, but also to change the intensity of the different taps. So for example, I can use it to control the volume of this voice. If I send the CV2 to the level of the FM operator, I can sort of like fade it out. So the first step will be on M10 and then this will be, let's say at about six and about four and about two. So now it will sort of fade out from each step right downwards. Right, but we can also use it for other things like timbre, like changing the intensity also with timbre, with the feedback and the FM depth. Right, so I will change, I will send the same signal also to the feedback and depth CV input and then just add this a bit. Right, so now the first step has the most intensity and the last one has the least intensity. Also this I will send to a delay. All, all I have to do is send this to the same group that I have here going to this uh, delay module. Right, I will unmute the first voice. Right, so again we have two simple sequencers. The probability key running with a slower clock and the eight step sequencer or the five step in this case also with a slower clock but from this with the note echo we created something a bit more complex with more movement more variation have you also a bass the phrase sequencer with the classic vco and the sub bass
Now we can also do interesting things with chords. Here I'm using the chord key again from impromptu. This will generate a three note chord. And the voice itself is the twist VCO going through Nimbus, which is a delay in this case and a nice filter. It will sound like this. Right now, first of all, as you can hear, we still don't get any chords. Right, and that's because we don't have polyphony here turned on on the note echo. Now again, since I have three note chords, I will set the polyphony to three voices. Right, so now we get the chords delayed. And again, we can add now a sort of a rhythm to this by changing the delay time. So here, for example, tap two will be three. Hopalach, tap three will be, let's say, six, and then we'll have eight. Right, so now we created a rhythm out of this. Right, and as you can see here, I'm using a quantizer again after the note echo. So again, I can transpose things freely without worrying about any scales or anything. Right, so I can actually transpose the chords. Right, listen to this. We get a whole different sequence from just one three note chord happening every now and then. We get a whole sequence of chords. And now, I can again add probability, and there are two modes when using polyphony, when using chords. By default, it will add the same probability to all channels. Right, you can see this here, it's set to chord, which means that there is probability if the whole chord will happen or not. It will sound like this. Let's take everything a bit down. Right, but I can also set this to separate, and now each channel has its own probability, so we might get individual notes as well. Right, sometimes here we get three notes, sometimes here two, sometimes here just one, sometimes no notes at all, depends on the probability. Each note, in this case, in this case each uh, channel of polyphony, has now its own probability. So again, from just a simple chord happening every now and then, listen to everything what we get here. Every here some drums starts to make this a bit more fun. A gate sequencer sequencing a kick with plates going through some delay. Have here a hi-hat with the drum module from Doc B again going through some delay. And here I have a bass with key call from Befaco with this lovely chain that, I'm uh, chain that I'm using a lot here, chorus, distortion, filter, delay, and in this case it's with a Euclidean sequence. Another way of using the note echo is without a pitch input, having the tap controls create the sequence. So here I'm using a seven step sequence just to gate the note echo every seven steps. Right, and I have three taps set. You can also turn uh, taps off just by turning them all the way to the left, right? So I have three of them set with transposition. So they are transposing, or actually just these three, transposing this non-sequence. You can see nothing goes into the pitch input. So basically the sequence itself, itself comes from the transposition here. And I also have probability set. So we even have probability per step. This is sequencing, again, the FM operator with some delay. Right, so every seven steps, the note echo will be gated and there will be probability for the three steps to play. Now the sequence itself from the sequencer that I'm using here, right, I'm using it for modulation. And there is another input here, the CV2. As we've seen before, we can use the CV2 by itself. If it's set here to offset, but we can change this to scale and now these knobs will scale the incoming voltage. 
right? So again, we can create all sorts of variation also to modulation sources. I have here a similar voice, in this case just with five steps, so again every five steps the note echo will be gated, again no pitch input, I'm not using any pitch information, the pitch itself will come from these two taps, again with probability and with transposition. Right here I'm doing the same just to generate chords, right, so the note echo will work as long as the gate input is high, right, so it will output the echoes as long as the gate is high, so if you have a longer gate you will create also chords, again, no pitch input, the pitch is coming from the taps, right, and the voice itself is the classic VCO, a filter, this lovely chain with a delay and distortion. Right, so this creates sorts of chords. Here I have some drums, again the gate sequencer, in this case sequencing a few drum modules from Doc B. here also a bass again with key call from the FACO. Right, so you can see how inspiring and unique the note echo can be. I really hope that you will go experiment with it some more. Please share your results with us. Thank you for watching. Cheers.